Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now today I thought I'd take you for a walk around Globus, which is the very big hypermarket which is in my local shopping mall, it's right behind me. Now first though, I want to take you for just a bit of a wander around the shopping centre just to see how busy it is. Now just as a point of reference, it is currently 4pm on Wednesday afternoon. Okay, so if you're a follower of the channel, you'll know that I just recently put a video at Mega Tropolistan, which is kind of another shopping center. It's about, well, 30 minutes from here by car, maybe 40 minutes uh, by train or bus metro. It's probably about an hour away. And I just thought I'd just walk around a little bit in uh, my shopping center. This is the one that I would come to here every day, every second day because it's basically on the same route as the bus that I catch uh, to, to this bus station. And then I'd catch the metro or the subway or the train into Moscow. And I just want to show you the difference. This is essentially exactly two days later than the previous video was filmed. So depending on when you're watching it, obviously if you want to see the other video to compare, here's my guy that seems to follow me everywhere. This is not the same guy from the other shopping center, but I just want to show you how busy it is. This is Globus where we'll head into in a few minutes. This is a huge hypermarket. This is actually uh, German run. It's not a Russian owned uh, supermarket chain or hypermarket chain. But I just want to show you really the amount of people here and just the contrasting difference uh, between the mega where I was and here at uh, Salaris. This shopping center is called Salara Shopping Center. It's at the metro station Salarevo. It's the whole kind of same area. Uh, it's actually a very big shopping center as well. It's built over two levels, kind of splits away here. Well, let's just walk around a little bit and just get an idea of the amount of people here. So the main reason I really want to do this just a little bit of a shopping center walk around before we go into the supermarket is there was a ton of comments. Oh, you were there at Monday at 10 a.m. You were at the quietest time. You were trying to not get people in the video. You were trying to show empty shopping centers. Now, just to compare, this particular shopping center is near a main highway. It's not too far from what's called the Makad, which is the main ring road around Moscow. It's connected to a metro station literally underneath. The shopping center is the metro entrance. There is an international bus station here which you can go to other countries or other parts of Russia. And there's also a very big bus station outside as well which is the one that I would catch in and out of from my town to here. So there's just a lot of reasons why Mega is so quiet and this place is so busy. And this is essentially exactly 48 hours time difference from when I was there at the other uh, shopping center. So this shopping center is basically a big circle or a kind of an oblong circle, if you like. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get around. Everybody kind of walks in, walks out. Uh, a lot of people, a, a very large amount of people coming in and out of the shopping center would come by public transport versus coming by car. There is a huge underground car park here as well. There's also a major outdoor one. So there's a lot of uh, transport links in and out of here, but just to get an idea of the amount of people streaming in and out of here, we're just gonna really just walk around. I'm not gonna point out really any stores because I think we've seen a lot of them. I'll obviously keep making different videos just to show the differences, but I think it's just a good example here of how busy a shopping center can be. Now anytime I come to this shopping center, I pretty much come in through these turnstiles over here or whatever you call these circle doors here. If you're coming in from the metro, literally it's underneath the shopping center. So you'll see everybody coming up these escalators here. will be coming from the metro and then everybody kind of joins up and starts streaming in this escalator here. This is kind of considered the main entrance. Uh, the bus station is literally right behind that yellow kind of color there is actually the metro entrance if you're coming in off the street. It's a very popular shopping center. So as I walk around a little bit more, I just thought I'd point out a couple of the mannequins here. I'm not too sure what the theme is here with the rabbits. Whether because it's the year of the rabbit? Is that the, like the Chinese uh, horoscope? 
I wonder if that's the meaning behind it. So another reason this shopping center has a lot of people passing through here and shopping here. There's a lot of non-shopping as well in the shopping center. So there's this really neat fitness center, which I pretty much pass going in and out of the shopping center. It's on the upper level here. So you can see where that main kind of glass entrance was on the left there. And then all the people here coming to work out. You come working out a shopping center. What a great use of the space. The exact space downstairs is a huge clothing store. So pretty much it's taken up. There's also the, uh, you know, like the steam rooms and saunas and everything like that. And it's just basically turnstiles to get in. So people probably have some kind of monthly membership. And the other neat thing about this shopping center, it has two food courts. There's the main one at the back, which is the kind of general fast food. And it has a food market here, or city food. They kind of keep calling them different things. But this is all food from different regions around Russia and around the world. So if you're kind of tired of KFC and Burger King, you can come to this kind of food court and have a look at everybody just chilling out here and enjoying themselves. Now, somebody in the other video the other day also commented about the shopping center looks like an airport. And now when I think about it, and when I kind of go to the different shopping malls with these big domed roofs, I kind of feel they're probably right. It does look like a bit like an airport and the kind of design of it. This is the upstairs level here, looking back into the main, main atrium. And they generally have sort of, sort of events down here. They don't have anything at the moment. Now, the only closed stores in this entire mall are literally right here. So what would be H&M, uh, Zara. I'm not sure what the one upstairs was, but it looks like they're remodeling that and it wasn't closed anyway. And then over here is Bershka, Pull and Bear on these sort of bottom levels here. And that was it. Every store otherwise in this shopping center is full open and trading. And I just want to point in one last shop out. I promise we're heading into the supermarket. This used to be Lush. So if anybody around the world knows Lush, which was the store that had soaps and bath bombs and all the kind of smelly things, it's now called MPH. But I keep reading it as Oompa, like as an Oompa Loompa. But I wonder if it's MPH. I'm not sure what the uh, pronunciation of it is, but it's definitely reopened. Now, seeing that I need to go shopping as well, I've grabbed myself one of the baskets and we're going to head on inside. Now, I've come to the opposite entrance here, which is the one where all of the house, house things are. Homewares, clothes, socks, famous grouse whiskey next to the socks. So this is not really the end that I want to go to. I've got to get a couple of things to take home. And there's also the electrical goods here, Polaris. It's very well advertised. And there's Tifal. So if you need this, uh, what are these? These like smart vacuums, robot vacuums. I think that's what they're called. I don't have one of those. We've got a regular vacuum, but uh, there's a bit of a mix of things at this end of the store. And I was trying to kind of find, I thought I was going to walk in the fruit and veg end, but I've ended up walking in the other end here. All the flowers now the end of winter. Have a look at the nice colors here on these flowers. Take these home, put them in your balcony or in the kitchen, and brighten up the place. Have a look at these cactuses. How hectic are those? That's some bright cactuses. I wonder if they paint them or color them. Don't imagine they grow that way, do they? Does anybody know? Let me know about that. Here's all the stuff for your car. And then in the temporary area here, it's just candy and gifts. There's a very big men's day tomorrow in Russia. It's sort of the equivalent of International Women's Day, but it's the men's version. Or if you think of Mother's Day, but Father's Day. Uh, that's tomorrow in all of Russia. So a lot of this is focused around everybody buying gifts for the men, I guess. So. As we see the alcohol section here on the right. And then, of course, not all the men just want chocolates, do we? We also want alcohol, so there's some vodka set up here. Plenty of vodka. And there's some whiskey. Have a look at all the doers right there. 
famous Dewar's whiskey. This comes from the brand, uh, Bacardi is the actual owner of this brand. And there's still a lot of it in Russia, so... And this is the biggest selling whiskey in all of Russia. William Lawson's. And that's why there's so much of it on display here. It's the best selling whiskey brand in Russia. It outsells Johnny Walker and Jack Daniels and the like. So... And here's the drink section. I know this supermarket very well, so... That's why I can kind of rattle off all the places where we're walking pretty easily. A lot of energy drinks stacked up. And all the juices here. If you want all these different cartons of juices. Cherry flavor. Tomato flavor. There's everything generally here but orange flavor. I think that's kind of the rest of the world has all the orange juices. And in Russia you've got every flavor except orange juice. Even you'll see here, the kind of tropical mix. Don Simon. I wonder who he is. Grapefruit, tropical, mango, and berries. Now, walking around in my other video, I went into Ashan. Now, Ashan is a French company. And this would be the direct competition. This is being a German company, Globus. So, it's kind of interesting just to compare the difference in how busy it is. How many more people are here. Uh, I think, generally, people prefer Globus over Ashan purely for the selection. Not necessarily a kind of price point kind of comparison, but if you want to compare the amount of choices you've got in here, I think it's much more than what Ashan has. You can see here the bread section. And then I'm not sure what the Scarecrow is doing. I don't know who the Scarecrow is meant to scare, but... I guess it's maybe a thing at the moment they put the scarecrow out. I think maybe to do with Mazonissa, I wonder. Here's the bakery right here. I have shown this in previous videos, but if you're new to the channel, maybe you haven't seen other Globus videos, there's a cake section over the back there as well. They do the cakes in-house. And the bakery is all behind these shelves here. And then the amount of choices of bread is really kind of very, very nice in here. That's probably why everybody likes it. Fairly normal unsliced loaf of bread. 65 rubles. If you want the, uh, I guess that's the half loaf there. 30 rubles. You want a half loaf of this round bread. And what else have we got? This different kind of wheat breads. These kind of dark brown breads here. 41 rubles. So there's a lot of choices of breads. And then there is some packaged bread off in the distance, but pretty much, I reckon it's probably 80, 90% of the bread in this store is produced in-house, which is a very good thing, right? It's just much easier for them. They can produce the quantities that they need. You'll see here the bakery on the right-hand side and all the staff in there. They do tend to do it around the clock. Every time I'm he here, it seems to be like they're not making bread, but they do <laughs> produce it in the store as we get to the dairy section here this is mostly all the cheeses hams uh, there is a very nice cheese section in here as well and this is where you come and practice your geography if you come into the cheese section and how many different countries flags can you spot obviously there's a lot more russian flags Belarusian flags, yeah, just a few flags from, from Russia. Uh, let's see if we can find any other countries. That's Argentina. I know that because of Messi and the World Cup. Can we see any other countries of flags? Maybe not. Oh, Swiss. Yes, that has to be Swiss cheese. Come on, look at that, the Swiss flag right there. How nice. And this whole cheese section kind of then blends into the ham and cured meat section. I don't think they've got the flags on the meats like they do the cheeses, but these are all the different smoked uh, hams. And it kind of goes all the way down. This supermarket also has a sushi, sushi section. <laughs> and I'm never here early enough to see the guy making the sushi. So he's done for the day now, but plenty of fresh sushi that he prepares right in the store back there in that little kitchen. As we kind of Make our way through the crowds. And then it's coming now to where the fish section is and the meat section. 
And you can see everybody wanting to get some uh, smoked fish. That's kind of all the different packets. And again, you can see these baskets are very, very popular. I've got mine that I'm still pushing around. I've got some bread so far and a bottle of cool drink. I'm not doing too well because I'm focusing on the camera more than I am where I'm going shopping. You can see all the different uh, smoked fish here. Very nice if you want to have that on the table. A couple of bottles of beer and some fish and you're good. And then this is actually the very small frozen fish section. And there's some other uh, shrimps and prawns and different things there as well. Very popular in Russia is this crab sticks, which I think everybody knows is not exactly crab, but it's uh, almost crab. <laughs> and here's some of the, more of the fish and the different uh, prepared fish if you want to go home and cook something yourself. And then there's a whole row, and then the aquarium is right up the end there. So. And here we are now, there's the caviar right in front of us. And again, it's, I mean, people do eat caviar year round in Russia. I think more notably, people tend to have it around holidays and the main holidays in Russia, all the salmon. And we come to the fruit and veg and the meat section over here on the right, you can see Lots of people <laughs> trying to decide what to buy for dinner, I think. Even coming to a large shopping center like this in a large supermarket, not everybody's sort of buying baskets of food. That's just very normal that people have these smaller baskets. And you can always come tomorrow or the next day. Uh, the fruit and veg section here. See Doers have got a nice big spot right here by the apples. It's kind of interesting there. They've got a Coca-Cola mixed in with the Dobra. So, please tell me what's going on. I mean, I know, of course, myself, but there's that big idea, that Coca-Cola left. And yet they're right here on the shelf. And it's, again, a little bit of a, bit of a difference from Arshan. That's an absolute certainty. Actually, I was in, actually, it was two days ago I was there. It feels like I was there today, but today I've come pretty much only to the shopping center. Uh, because I need to come buy some things. I wanted to come for lunch. And I wanted to check out the comparison. So the fruit and veg. Lots of uh, lemons and oranges here. Mandarins are always popular in Russia. And I'm always curious why they have six types of mandarins. Well, I think we're all just happy with one, but I guess we can choose from the other five types. If there's not enough, no, I need bananas. That's what I need. And they're just up ahead of me. There's some packaged fruit here as well. And then here's the place I get my chickens from, my roast chicken. I'm so happy that I found this. I've known that they were here, but I just never knew how good they were. When I compare a roast chicken in Australia to the one here in Globus, pretty much exactly the same. And here are the bananas. What are they offering the price today? It's 89, 99 rubles. So 90 rubles for a kilo and plenty to choose from. And I think these are the Ecuador bananas. I think we're not gonna get away. I think they're always the Ecuadorian ones. Now, if you're curious what I was gonna buy in the store here, I came for lasagna. Now they have very nice, I'm gonna call it homemade lasagna right here. So I've got myself a slice of lasagna or a portion and I got some potatoes, some uh, already cooked potatoes. So I can literally go home, warm it up and we're good. And I got my bananas already. As the guy puts out new boxes while I'm standing here, of course. There's a full pallet ready to go there. Product of Ecuador. Check that out right there. How do they come from Ecuador? And they're 89 rubles a kilo. Can someone answer that in the comments of the video because obviously there's a very good supply chain but plenty of people so this is the other entrance here right where I am so you kind of walk right into the fruit and veg section that's why you see some people just walking in and then get a little bit confused which way they want to go all the very typical vegetables here cucumbers tomatoes there's 
we kind of live on about four different types of vegetable and three different types of fruit. And that's it, apart from the fact this store's got every possible type you want. We really like the staple items. This is how tiny the freezer section is. So it's two aisles. So one side essentially is ice cream and some frozen berries and some frozen vegetables. And this other side here is taken up pretty much by pilmene or different types of dumplings and sort of pastry kind of uh, items that you'd sort of defrost or put in the oven. And we see here again, Dobro's got a nice display here. This would have been all the Coca-Cola displays. And so we kind of make our way, kind of looped around now to the registers. Here's the backside of the dairy section here. This is where all the milks are, cheeses, yogurts. It's, uh, there's a lot to choose from. That's the thing with this Globus. This is why people love to come here, because you've got the variety and you can walk in and choose from so many different types. You can walk out of here, jump on the metro or jump on a bus or jump in your car and head on home. And you've got a lot of a reason to come to this shopping center more than just normal clothes. So we kind of make our way again through the traffic. We can see all the eggs. So Russia does have eggs. I would imagine they're not German chickens that are uh, bringing these, putting, producing these eggs. These will all be from Russia. So that's the egg section all the way down. And then right opposite is the never ending fridge of mayonnaise choices. Here we come into the candy section. So there's the pay by weight candy here that you just sort of choose your favorite one and how many grams you want. And there's all the different aisles here of the normal candy. And then we come across to the tea section. And there's tea and coffee here. It's all the promotions. Everything mostly on the end of the displays are all the ones that are on special. And the promotions. And then the regular aisles have all the normal selection. So yeah, there's a, one entire side is coffee. And then the tea section, that's kind of a good uh, judgment there of how Russians like their uh, drinks here. There's not a person looking at the, oh, one lady's looking at coffee now, but everyone was looking at teas on that left-hand side. There's some big bags of coffee here. Nero, I don't know, Nero. Jardine, I've seen a few more than once. Now, if I wasn't catching the bus home, I'd buy myself a big bottle of Chernogolovka here. It's only 94 rubles, and this is the Mandarin one that I really like. This is my other favorite drink in the store here. Chernogolovka is a very well-known Russian brand that I'm going to say probably their sales have had to have gone up in the last year since Pepsi and Coke supposedly left. And these guys have just jumped right into the market, and their sales would have gone up overnight so yeah we look like we're just about done walking around and finding what i needed to uh need a big winter onesie i'm not sure project snow <laughs> obviously it's winter now so i'm not sure i'd sort of wear one of these personally but i'm sure there's a market for them somewhere so yeah i hope i've kind of shown a good difference if I compare Ashan and Globus just walking around and how many people are in here. It's really roughly still about the same time as I was in Ashan, oh yeah, uh, two days earlier. So it's definitely a good uh, judge of the, uh, the, that there is people shopping, there is people buying things, you know, and uh, just the comparing how quiet Ashan was, it was such a difference. Not too many people down the dairy aisle here. This is the yogurts section. I think it's cold enough outside. People don't want to go in the dairy section today. Okay, so I made it out of Globus, finally. There was a bit of a line for the registers there, so finally got out. I hope you've enjoyed this walk around. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a mixed video where I kind of decided to show the shopping center show Globus. 
Ideally, if you've watched the previous video on the channel, it'll make a lot of sense. I'm gonna put a link to it so you can check it out and compare how the Russian typical shopping center looks uh, in one part of Moscow to another part of Moscow, which is, this is very close to where I live. I'm gonna catch a bus now. About 20 minutes from now, I'll be at home. So thanks everybody. I've got half a hand free for a thumbs up. So I've got my shopping bag to carry on the bus home. Uh, if you like to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. No worries. I'm sure it helps the algorithm somehow. Uh, but obviously more positives than negatives, I think. If you want to post a comment, let me know what you think. Maybe you can make a comparison to the shopping center where you live and how busy it is there at the moment compared to where I've been shopping today. I'm just going to watch where I'm walking. I'm walking right where people are coming towards me. So thanks everybody. I've got another video for you to watch right after this one. So if you want to click that right now, you can check out another video on the channel and maybe something you haven't seen before. I'm heading on home now, so I'll catch you later. Bye.